Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today I'm going to be trying to simulate smoke. So, if you didn't notice, Blender 2.82 came out, and if you did notice that, you may not have noticed that there's a new smoke simulation. And if you did notice that, you might not know how to use it like me. And that's all to say, I'm going to try and learn how to use it today. So, I need this shot here, where there's going to be some smoke coming out from behind this canister thing. There's going to need to be a lot of smoke. So if you're up for it, I'm going to just kind of show you how I learn things, I guess. So I've got the shot mostly set up. Put in a domain around it and stuff like that. I'd say this will work out pretty well for the domain size. So, if you're new to smoke simulations, it's pretty important that you have two objects, a domain, and then an emitter. And my can here is going to be the emitter. Actually, I'm going to add in a different object right here in the back for that. And it just sticks right with it. Perfect animation, but I've got a little bit of noise on the camera, which makes it look like it's going really fast. And that's just kind of a little trick for you there. Another thing I think I'm going to do for the setup is... I'm going to get a wind force on here, just so that it looks like it's going fast. So once again, shift S, cursor to selected, and I'm going to go force, wherever that may be, force field, and then wind. So I'm going to scale this up a little bit so we can see it, and I'm going to hit shift and select the canister. I'm going to go control C and copy rotation. Now you might not have the copy rotation function by default, so go into preferences and let's see, add-ons. So this add-on is super useful for things like copying the rotation, like I just showed you. And also you can copy location of things and all sorts of stuff. It's pretty useful. Highly recommended. So once again, we can just hit Control C and then location, and it'll end up in the same rotation and location and stuff. That's super handy. So I'm going to rotate it on some local axis, like Y, so R, Y, twice. And I'm going to go 180 so that it is facing behind the canister. And if we go into x-ray mode, at the bottom here, um, I'm just hitting Z to go into view, and then toggle x-ray. Um, you can see this little arrow here, and with this, we're just going to drag it out, and that will increase the force of the wind. And that is a little bit extreme there, so I'm going to go something like this. And we can always look at the force field properties here. That's a strength of 14 right now. And let's just keep it there for now and see how it works eventually. I'm going to grab it on its local Z axis, so G, Z, Z. And then I'm going to select the canister once more. Try. There we go. And then hit Control P, Object, and that will just parent the force to the canister, so that's always going to be out in front there. Alright, so this is most of the setup. If you take a look here, it looks like the smoke is just not here, which kind of is a problem, but it's actually fluid, which is kind of strange, but if we switch this to be flow... Don't fruit, get out of here, ladybug! We're off! Okay, so once we have the fluid for the emitter, if we switch this to be flow, that will be the source of our smoke, and then let's select our domain here, and once again, fluid, and switch that to be domain. Now, 
When we've got the domain selected, and we've got the fluid type set to be domain, then once we go into settings, we can switch this to be gas rather than liquid. Liquid will be like for water and stuff, gas is for smoke and stuff. So as we just scrub through here, you can see nothing is really going on at the moment, and that's just because we don't have it baked out. Unfortunately, from what I've seen, you can't use this in real time just yet, which is kind of annoying, but no big deal. So let's set up our place where we're going to bake. I'm going to save my scene real quick. And then, let's see, go down here to cache and just set up your folder system where you want this baked out. Alright, so I've picked out my folder. Now we're going to want to set the start and end frame for our cache. So I'm just going to go actually a little bit farther than the start frame. So let's start at negative 30-ish. And that will just have the smoke trailing out a little bit right at the start instead of just starting to trail out at the start. It'll look like it's been coming down for a while, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so let's set the end as well. And we're just going to go all the way to the end frame here, 167. Now something I've learned for baking smoke simulations and simulations in general, when you have no idea what you're doing, it's generally a better idea to go low resolution for the divisions and quality of the simulation just so that it doesn't take a whole lot of time to bake something that we don't really understand what's going on. So, once you got all that set up, let's just hit Bake Data. Okay, well, I baked it out and nothing happened, so I'm going to figure out what the heck is going on here. Here's a few settings that look good that I kind of recognize from the old simulator. I'm going to hit Dissolve because I don't want this to last forever. And since we have a bake in place, um, all our options are grayed out at the moment, so I'm going to free data. Now we can mess around with stuff, maybe figure out even why it's not showing up. I guess we'll find out later. Another thing I'd like to use is the adaptive domain, just so it's not calculating this whole giant cube all at once. Another thing eventually I'm going to use is noise, and that just makes things look a little bit more high resolution. Okay, let's see if it actually shows up. Still nothing. Another little tip is maybe don't even set the full amount of frames, just so you can get a faster bake going on. Uh, this isn't super working, but actually we have a little dot here, so I think what was the problem before Bro, why is it not even working? So that setting was messed up. Why am I recording this? I don't even know what I'm doing Okay, so I found out a little bit more what I'm doing, so that's cool This is Aha, there we go so I found out a little bit more about what I'm actually doing here, and as you can see, this is starting to be the effect that I want. Starting. Um, so let me just show you real quick what I just found out. This little emitter guy needs to be set to inflow rather than geometry. If it's geometry, it'll just be a tiny little bit of a poof, and we don't really want that. Second thing, if you select a domain, you can actually go down here to the cache settings and if you want it to be an instant replay of like what you're baking and stuff you can set it to be replay or you can set it to be final which I'm guessing is like when you're working on your final bake okay so a few more settings that I actually ended up using are dissolve and adaptive domain so those will help me out quite a bit I believe just because the uh, adaptive domain saves some resolution and some baking time and I don't want it to be running into the edge of the domain, so I've made it so it dissolves mostly on the way out. And you really won't see it that much anyways, so that's alright. And I think we're finally on to something here. Alright, so I've got something here. It's starting to look quite a bit better, I think. The big change I've added in here is I've enabled noise, and I've got an up-res factor of 3, and I baked that. So this is what it looks like. And I think we're actually getting somewhere here. So, my next step is to make it so that it's not completely enveloping the back of the canister here. So I'm going to make sure my emitter thingy is backed up a little bit. Free the noise bake, and I'm going to free this bake as well. So nothing is baked at the moment. And I'm just going to grab this little guy and move it over here. For my main simulation, I have a resolution of 120, which is starting to crank it up a little bit. But I think we can go just a little bit higher. So I'm going to do, I don't know, 300, 250. Let's try that. One thing I just forgot about is with the emitter, we don't really want that to show up in renders. So 
I'm going to go to the object settings here and just go uncheck that for show and renders under visibility. And we should have some nicer looking smoke in a second here. And hey, look at this. Um, I was baking for a long time. And so I, I kind of got distracted and, and was on the internet for a long time. And now my brother's peeing, peeing piano. But it's starting to look pretty good. I think the part over here is a little bit messed up looking, but luckily we don't see that part, so that's all good. And it still only goes to frame 80, just cuts out after that. So I think I'm going to do a couple more bakes, just the, the big bake and then the noise bake, and make sure it goes all the way down to frame 67. So I will catch you when that happens. And recording screen once more, and did I ever sync up last time? I don't remember. Hope I did. All right, here we go. So I baked it past frame 80 and it looks kind of like this. And it gets a little bit crazy towards the end here, but from the camera view, it gets a little bit crazy. Um, but from the camera view, it's not terrible. It'll work out, I think. So now all we need is a shader because if we render this, it doesn't appear. So that's a problem. So I'm gonna select this domain Go into shading, go add new material, and delete our principled BSDF, and add a principled volume shader. Just gonna drop this volume into the volume, and bam, we have smoke. Look at that. That's actually, it's actually pretty pretty. Should we make it thicker? How thick can we make it? Oh, that doesn't seem to do anything much. What if it's like... So this looks a little bit low resolution at the moment. I'm just going to hit a quick render and see what happens. It still looks low resolution, so what I'm going to do is go to this... Uh, whatever this is, render settings? Render properties. And go to volumetrics and switch this from 8 pixels to 2 pixels. And that looks slightly better, I guess. Let's try this. Still kind of crappy looking. <laughs> I'm going to have to work on that. And back to this. All right, so you can see this is what I had before. It was kind of crappy looking. And I, what I did to change that was I just turned up the samples to 100. That's what this looks like. And then I went to 200. And that's what this looks like. So I think I just need to turn it up a ridiculous amount for it to look decent. So check out this setting. It's pretty crazy, the effect that it has. So with distribution set to something low, like zero, it looks like this. But when I cranked it all the way up to one, it looks like this, which kind of reminds me of Mad Max or something, but it's absolutely insane. And I kind of like it. Might be a little bit too much at this point, so I'm gonna turn it down a tiny bit, but I like this look a lot. So it turns out when the camera is looking at the sun and the reflection in the water, the post-processing is kind of insane. <laughs> it kind of goes, yeah. But I just wanted to take a moment here to show you about the slots in the render window thingy. So you can get this window by hitting F12 or F11 or just going to render here and hitting view render. So there's a little drop down up here that says slot 8. At the moment I'm using slot 8. So you can just use any of these to kind of store a rendered image in. So in slot 1 I have this image and you can just hit J to cycle through your images. So I find this is really useful when I'm comparing settings, like the distribution setting here, or how many samples looks best. So yeah, I hope you found that helpful. At least there's something of value in this dumpster fire of a tutorial. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I'm just going to run over all the settings once more real quick, just so you can see what's going on. So for the domain, fluid, domain, and you can see all the settings here. But what I'm doing is with gas, I've got a resolution of 250. I left all these pretty much the same, don't really know what they do, but then I baked that. And for smoke settings here, I just left all the border collisions open. I made sure to check dissolve, so it just kind of fades out at the end there. And that's got a time of 10. Then I checked the adaptive domain, all the settings there are the same, and I checked noise. So for noise, I turned up the up res factor to 3, and I just changed the scale a little bit as well. And then I baked that. And you can see my cache here. It goes from like negative 30 to the end. So that works out pretty well. I've got that saved, went over that. I'm using the modular cache right now. And this is what we get. 
So I'm sure I could do a little bit more advanced stuff in the future, but for my second smoke simulation, I think this will work out just fine. Anyways, that's pretty much it for me. Like I said before, I don't really know what I'm doing, so if this helps one person just a little bit, that pretty much makes it worth it for me. Anyways, if you found this helpful, there's a link in the description that says free hydraulic kit bash elements, and if you're interested in joining my email list and getting some free hydraulic kit bash elements, I recommend you click that. So pretty much what I do with this list is I just update people whenever I'm creating a new tutorial. So that's pretty much what you can expect. I'll catch you next week. Cheers!